Hello and welcome to another episode of That Thermal Guy. Got something special for you today. Don't skip ahead. Do not fast forward. Seriously, you will ruin the experience if you do. Today I'm going to be showing you what I mean when I talk about operator bias and why I say you don't have to beat the sensor, you have to beat the operator. I don't want to give away the game here, so what I have done is recruited my son to put himself as a target in the thermal finder. And you are going to be taking the role of a thermal operator looking through the viewfinder, tracking a target. That's what I'm giving you. That's what I want you to do. Thank you. All right, now the game is up. You know what's going on. From this point forward, it's gonna be a lot harder. This is why I wanted to surprise you because it's important to not have the expectation going in of what is happening. In the real world, an operator is not gonna have advanced knowledge that their prey is out there for number one, and for number two, that they're already in the viewfinder, and for number three, that they could be employing thermal camouflage. In the real world, an operator is used to what they are used to, and that is big bright white or black objects, depending on if you're in white hot or black hot mode, that are shape of humans. That's what you're looking for, that's what you're seeing. That is your operator bias. You'll have an expectation of what you should see when you're looking through that, and that's what you're gonna look for. Without knowing in advance that someone is employing thermal masking, you're not gonna see it. And that's kind of the point I was trying to make. So how much is good enough? How much is good enough in the thermal evasion world is how much does it take to make you look like background, to make you look like scatter, to not make you look like a normal person. That's what I wanted to show you. This video was done with the ghillie suit, gas mask. This is a boonie hat with some ghillie material. These are glacier gloves. It's a wetsuit-like material. This is the perforated aluminum material that was sent in to me by one of the viewers. It is tucked down both sleeves. Cold weather, balaclava. House radiant barrier. That was mostly for the armpits and over the shoulders. This is a firefighter's bullard. I wore it like a cummerbund around the center to block that heat and help hold those in place. You can see the perforated aluminum. Now let's tuck down the sleeves. This is just a standard tricolor BDU jacket with ghillie material and a nesh attached to it. Sweater and t-shirt. Underneath the ghillie pants, I've got firefighter proximity pants. without the thermal lining. This is just the outer material of the proximity pants over a pair of blue jeans. 
That's what we got going on. Hopefully, that was all visible. Thanks for watching.